the new Rat Green Show. And now, here's the host with the most. In terms of facial hair and predators, that is. Your hero, my uncle, Rat Green. You probably guessed today is our annual tournament for those of us in the PGA, Possum Golf Association. <laughs> so in a few minutes, the lodge members will be out there thwacking their niblicks and swinging their mashies out on the links. You guys belong out on the links. Yeah. The missing links. <laughs> <laughs> it's the missing links. You know, I was just, I heard that you guys were banned from the golf course for life without parole. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We, we, we played the, uh, the game the way the British play golf. You know, they, were, they divided it up into teams. That's what happened. There. Polo. What? They played polo on a public golf course. Oh. <laughs> we weren't playing polo on polo. They're, they're on horses there, eh? We were on the all-terrain vehicles. <laughs> What you're looking at here is a bunch of segments from this particular show. The main message being, for gosh sakes, don't even think about changing the channel. I'll tell you something, if you're gonna try and make sense out of this program, you gotta give it your undivided attention. Well, even though we've been banned from the Possum Lake Golf and Ski Club, we're going to go ahead with our annual tournament at another location. You know, at first we were thinking of using uh, the Port Asbestos Institute for the Criminally Insane. <laughs> uh, they got that big grassy area there, you know, but uh, a lot of the inmates thought that it would interfere with their rehab. So instead, we're going to use a course down by the uh, Jupiter Drive-In Theater. What, what, what course is that? I mean, there's, the, uh, there's that big empty field with all those old school buses in it. Then there's, what, City Hall? There's the go-kart track, and then there's the hospital. And after that, <laughs> you're going to have your tournament at Pete's Park and Putt Mini Golf. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, all right, maybe it's not the Masters, but it's flat, it's green, it's got 18 holes. <laughs> oh, big whoop, so does Moose Thompson's underwear. <laughs> oh, something's bad. Oh, boy. Uh, I was about to say something special this week. Uh, we're gonna do it. Uh, Bill invited me to come over there. We're gonna do some. Uh, gonna do some glass blowing. And he wanted me to pick up a book from the library. I didn't realize we had a library in town, but uh, we did right across from. There we go. The glass blowing. Glass blowing made easy. It's a book. That's a book. That's all about glass blowing. It's. Uh, well, it was a hot day there. Oh, oh my God! It's a hot day, and I'm kind of trying to give him the hint as to how warm I. Bill, I'm kind of warm here. If you had any kind of a, any kind of a soft turn. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Thank you very much. I don't know how cold that'll be. <laughs> well, that, that cooled me down a little. Uh, mind you, I was kind of hoping to take it internally. And it's not something I say all that often. What's going on here, Bill? Oh, for gosh sakes, I got it. Yeah, he just wants to use the, the bottles because it's going to... This is a, this is an ancient an ancient art, this glass. Well, you take all kinds of... Any kind of glass, apparently. And I guess he wanted the color of the bottles there because you get that in there and then it would kind of color it all. Oh, my. Oh, my. I think he may have hit uh, Elsie the safety cow there with a piece of shredded glass. Anyway, uh, there's another source of glass, you know. These are, these are never problems, they're opportunities, right, Bill? So and then he can uh, get that window glass in there with the bottle glass and the various other glasses that he has in there and then just kind of, again, just you want to break them up apparently into the small, into the small tiny pieces with that and just, uh, you know, I'm starting to wonder about uh, Bill's ability to grip things. Uh, Anyway, so uh, well now he's added safety glass, which is uh, always a good idea with Bill. And, uh, anyways, hopefully he's got enough glass there together, and uh, now he can just uh, break that into little pieces. By God, just use the van any way you want, Bill. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. And you can use any kind of glass you want. What's the matter? Where's your glasses, Bill? <laughs> Here knew her. They called her the Rose of the Lodge. She had the face of an angel and the rear end of a 53 Dodge. Oh, the Rose of the Lodge, they called her, and I'll tell you the reason for that. 
Her father was Bud, her mom was a climber, and she had thorns all over her back. <laughs> okay, today's contestants are playing for a free oil and lube and fluid check from Stanley's Fried Chicken. Okay, Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dalton Humphreys of the Humphreys Everything Store to say this word, imaginative. Hey, go. All right, Dalton. No, no. Creative. Sneaky. <laughs> Someone with original ideas is troublemaker. <laughs> Bad influence. No, no. It's a foreigner. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm saying people who, who write books and they make movies and, and, and then they have art, they're very rich. No, 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 no. These are people who see things other people don't see. Oh, delusional? No. no. Weird. No, no, no. Sick in no, the head. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm... Inventive. Well, smart Alec. No. <laughs> Ingenious. Not normal. <laughs> all right, all right, Dalton. You know, people come in and they buy that crap in your store and they think that you're lying, you're oh. cheating, you're ripping them off. But in your mind, you're being... Imaginative. There we go. Oh. Well, this week now on Handyman Corner, I thought what I might do is take old man Sedgwick's coffee table and restore it to its original condition. Well, no, maybe not original condition, but at least the condition it was in before Moose Thompson sat on it. <laughs> the problem here is the legs are way too spindly on this thing, as they are on old man Sedgwick. So uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of fix that up. I guess a lot of people would throw that right out, but uh, hey, I'm not a lot of people. I'm barely me. So what I'm going to do is turn a whole new set of legs for that coffee table with this electric lathe right here. The electric lathe, great thing for making uh, round stuff like candlestick holders, swimming pools, Hats. You just take the uh, wood stock you're going to work with there. Well, not wood stock, really. Well, there's a remember. Oh, my God. And you just fire that in there, just like that, tighten her down. And you take one of these uh, tools like this, and you just shave off anything that isn't round. Sort of like what you do in the shower in the morning. All right? Plug her in, fire her up. Okay, did I mention to make sure that you center the wood in the lathe? <laughs> now, you want to mark the center of each end of the piece of wood using the most accurate measuring device in the handyman's repertoire. Your eye. <laughs> so I'm thinking, hey, if we're going to make round things out of a piece of wood, why not start with a round piece of wood? Surprised you didn't figure that out earlier. <laughs> Let's have a serious moment now, though, about safety. Protection for yourself is a very powerful industrial tool here. I would recommend you get yourself a high-quality safety helmet, some sort of an eye shield, eye protection, and safety goggle type of unit, and extra thick industrial strength gloves. All of these things are important. This is your health at stake here. <laughs> there was one other thing. I can't remember. I guess it wasn't important. All right, let's get lathing. Oh, tools are over there. Uh, yeah, that was the other thing I, I forgot to mention. Don't wear loose clothing. Okay, let's make table legs. Wrong tool. You've made legs for your table using your lathe. <laughs> Just that simple. So remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. <laughs> oh boy. Stay tuned and relax. Whatever this is, we got a lot more of it. Welcome to Autobiography, where uh, members of Possum Lodge talk about cars that have, you know, had some significance uh, to them. Uh, this week we have Winston Rothschild of Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. No tank too big, no tank too small. Teacup or cesspool, we suck them all. So, Are we there yet? Yeah, we're all right. Uh, 
Winston, uh, maybe you could uh, tell us about your very first car. Oh, geez, great memory. Yeah. She was an old Ford. Eh? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll never forget. Country Squire Ranch Wagon. Oh, sure. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember it, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the one that had the, uh, the real honest-to-goodness imitation wood sides. Oh, sure. <laughs> what a great car those yeah. old Fords were. Yeah. Be because, you know, like the body, <laughs> the body, forget about it, rust right off. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah. But, but the V8 engine, <laughs> Go forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, you know, the new Fords uh, just don't rust out like the old ones, eh? <laughs> sort of miss that, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. Gosh, that wagon, that was a big unit. Oh, it's huge. It? Huge. Absolutely huge. Yeah. Well, you know, I ran my first business out of that station wagon. Did not know that, sir. Yeah. No, I thought you all just had the, the sewage and septic business. What, what were you doing then? That's what I'm talking about. What? <laughs> Yeah, like I, I, would, I, I mounted the pump here in the oh, passenger side, right yeah. next to me there, yeah. you know, where you are. Yeah. And then uh, what I, I, I would do is I'd flip the back seat down, yeah. you know, and then I'd put a, a swimming pool liner in, in there, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she holds 400 gallons. Oh. <laughs> so you're carrying sewage around in the back of your car? Well, yeah, for a short time, uh, you know, until I got enough money for, you know, the down payment on the truck, eh? Yeah. But I was motivated because, you know, yeah. that was the hottest summer on record. <laughs> But, but here's what I did, eh? I would, uh, I, I would pop out the front windshield, you know, yeah. and I'd stick my head out the side, you know, like yay, yeah. and, and uh, I'd go like a banshee, yeah. and the wind, wind would, yeah, the wind oh, would sure. knock all of that into the back. Oh, there. sure, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, yeah. although I gotta tell you, <laughs> I still break out into a cold sweat every time I see a stop sign. <laughs> tournament at Pete's Park and Putt Mini Golf, and we carried on the proud Possum Lodge tradition of getting banned from everywhere we go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I didn't know golf was a full contact sport. No, well, this is the way we play it, Harold. You know, although in fairness, I think the miniature golf thing confused some of the guys. We should have told them not to use their drivers. <laughs> Yeah, and, and they're electric golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys are the worst sports I've ever seen. Well, golf's a frustrating game, Harold, eh? And the guy's temper gets a hold of him there, especially that one hole where he had to putt between the legs of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. On his ninth try, Stinky lost his temper, went over and buried his pitching wedge in Sneezy's forehead. Clear <laughs> to sinuses. Yeah. You know? <laughs> anyway, we figured out that the problem with miniature golf is not the golf, it's the miniature. Now, we're going to start again with a new course, new equipment, and a brand new game we call Maxi Golf. <laughs> Maxi Golf? Maxi, mini golf is out. Maxi Golf is in, Harold. Big holes, big clubs, big balls. <laughs> And your membership number. Uh, my name's Dave. My number is a four. Oh, a five, six, seven, nine, two. Okay, just hold on, Dave. We're going to insert that into the Possum Lodge computer to verify your membership. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dave, you're behind in your dues, aren't you? Uh, it, it's in the mail. Uh, sounds good to me, Dave. Uh, what's your problem? Well, uh, I've got a real emergency happening here. We're looking to buy a new vehicle, and she wants to buy, oh, gosh, a minivan. Oh. <laughs> That's a tough one, Dave. A minivan, Red? Yeah, what on earth am I going to do, a minivan? I, I really don't see the problem. I, you know, I think they're sporty and sharp, and they're fuel efficient, they're practical. I wish I had one. <laughs> yeah. See, see Red, I, I don't want to end up like Harold. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you there. You know, I'll tell you something. Now, a minivan may seem like a bit on the feminine side, but you can you can you can dress them up, Dave. You can get a lot of the masculine accessories on oh, that unit. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be careful. You know, don't get don't get bad stuff. You know, like those custom wheel covers. Yeah. They're gaudy. They really are. You yeah. know. Or those tacky mud flaps with the silhouettes of the naked ladies on it. That's all. There's no respect for the feminine personages by doing that. You no, know. No. You don't need that. Or people put like those neon lights underneath the vehicle. What's going on there? Yeah. That's just a waste of energy. A 
waste of energy. Yeah, if you're looking at the ground, you're not watching the road, I figure. And, yeah. those, and they got these air horns on there that sound like they stole them off like a, a diesel train or something, you know? Yeah. And those mufflers go <laughs> I think like a band of drummers are coming at me or something. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. And they got like these mud flaps, you know, and the fender skirts and running boards. Running boards? I tried running. You can't get any speed at all. They're really slow. <laughs> She's running right off this thing. That's silly. And then you got those tailpipe extensions. Come yeah. on. Did you get all that, Dave? What? Uh, what was the last one? Tailpipe extensions. Yeah, look. Uh, thanks. I, I, I hope we can afford all this. <laughs> All right, it's uh, glass blown time. Adventures with Bill here. Got all the glass. Put the glass into the. Put the glass. That's not glass. These are plastic items, Bill. What's going on? I guess he. Uh, I guess he decided to abandon the glass thing. He's going to blow plastic. That's kind of unusual. With all kinds of plastic. Wait, 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 wait. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> And melt all the plastic together and make a big goopy thing. Oh! Make a big, uh, big goopy thing there. Boy, golly, take a good. Wow, I'm telling you. Holy mackerel, that would have set you back a couple of years. I'm telling you, holy jump. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's cheaper than a case of beer, I'll tell you. And up she comes. What the heck we got there? Wow. There. He looks good with a pipe, doesn't he? Whoa. And there we go. And then, uh, well, see, now that is just a piece of copper piping. He gets in there and gets a ball of the plastic goop on the end, and then he uh, swirls that around so it seals up, and then he can actually blow it. This is, I guess this is kind of the modern version of glass blowing. You're blowing the plastic, got all the carcinogens, blowing them up uh, full tilt and twice again. Bill, I think that might be uh, Bill. I think that might uh, Bill. I'm thinking Bill. Bill, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. See you later, Bill. That's what I'm thinking. My God, wouldn't that be like eight feet across? And it's gonna go. She's gonna go. No, you're fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> Told you. There's Bill, a veneer of his former self. Either that, or he's plastered. <laughs> okay, Bill. Here's a pair of Possum Lodge binoculars sent to us by a viewer. We're about ready to tee off for the first annual Possum Lodge Maxi Golf Tournament. You want to be in my foursome, Harold? Oh, maybe. Is that the trophy? Who'd want to win that? <laughs> Not a trophy, Harold. That's our golf tee. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the tee, how big's this Maxi Golf Ball? Pretty darn Maxi. You know that big brass ball they got painted like Jupiter hangs over the entrance of the Jupiter Drive-In? It's not there anymore. <laughs> that thing's like six feet across. Yep. You're going to need, like, holes that are seven feet across, ten feet deep. Where are you going to find 18 of those? The potholes on the road into town. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's right. That's right. You could do that. Yeah. Well, what are you going to use to hit them with? You know, I mean, it's not like a regular golf ball. It's like a, a planet. It's a planet. <laughs> My big blue eight iron, Harold. It's a possum fan. <laughs> big blue. It's a V8. And it's made of iron. And a huge sweet spot, the whole front grill. Talk about driving the ball, eh, Harold? Welcome to the expert portion of the show, where we examine those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. On this week's expert portion of the show, we have guests, my Uncle Red, Natch, and of course, and his best friend in the whole wide room, Pilot by Sherwood. <laughs> And if you are right, dear experts, I'm fed up with crime, and I'm thinking of moving from the city to Possum Lake. Is there much crime where you are? Ah, good question. Well, no, no, there's no crime up here, un unless borrowing something and never giving it back is called theft. <laughs> well, I, I know some of the wardrobe choices up here border on the criminal. <laughs> yeah? Your outfit could get a ticket for littering. <laughs> Yeah, well, yours would get one for loitering. <laughs> okay, about this lady's question, though. Um, uh, yeah. Well, let's, let's just say, uh, ma'am, that there, there wouldn't be anybody up here who'd be on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> yeah, maybe America's Most Wasted. <laughs> uh, America's, uh, America's Most What? 
wanted. America's most wanted. Yeah. You've never, you don't watch television, Mr. Sherwood? Not, not since the Mod Squad, man. <laughs> Well, America Most Wanted, it's like a television show, right? And it shows unsolved crimes from maybe like 5, 10, or even 20 years ago. And they have actors play the criminals, which, you know, isn't that much of a stretch, really. You know, 20 million bucks for cable guy, please. And all the, then they show these pictures of the suspects, right? And they always look like Moose Thompson's driver's license photo. You ever notice that? It looks just like Moose Thompson's driver's license photo. And Robert Stack, he's the host, right? He did The Untouchables and, and nothing else ever since. But he has this show now. And he says, you know, do you recognize this face? Does this person look similar to you? If so, phone in now. And everybody at home goes, I don't know. Oh, that guy, I know that guy. That's my stepfather. That guy sits right beside me at work. And then they phone him and they say, oh, hello, Robert Stack, Robert Stack, the guy's here. Come and get him, come and get him. <laughs> That's America's most wanted. You want to see that? What? 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 <laughs> Should we phone Robert Stack? <laughs> Excuse me, Harold. Well, uh, got to tell you, our game of maxi golf was a big, big hit. I got hit by the ball. <laughs> yeah, big, big hit. <laughs> well, Harold, you should have been on the fairway. I was standing in the middle of the road. And I was walking ahead of you guys. Well, we were playing through. <laughs> Besides, this makes you look like a real golfer. You got a dog leg left. <laughs> well, you should have yelled four. Couldn't it was a Chrysler? I should have yelled Dodge. <laughs> yeah, my golly, what a great day, boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, man, oh man, eh? The bunch of us driving our cars, bashing into that ball. Although uh, Junior Singleton, I think he needs a front end alignment. Boy, he whiffed on one shot, rolled his truck into the ravine. <laughs> Talk about your bad lies. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you hear the ones he tells his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's meeting boy, time, Uncle Red. Yeah. Wheel of the Puzzle. There we go. Oh, there you go, Harold. Boy, oh, boy. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is watching. Uh, be coming straight home after the meeting. I know you've never been a real big fan of golf, but I was hoping maybe later we could play around. <laughs> Unless you're teed off. <laughs> well, the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and uh, Mr. Niblick back there and the whole gang up here at Possible Lodge, you keep your stick on the ice. today flash bullets and moose thompson's making some of his world famous chili so if you know anyone who lives to the south of us you might want to start sending out you know smoke signals or phone calls whatever you can think of save a life <laughs> Ha, 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 ha!